All right, one more, one more day here. This is it, last day where we currently are. We gotta fly back into big city, hang out for a few days, and then journey back home. So here I am, just had my breakfast. I'm gonna bite my lip on stuff I would like to talk about right now, probably talk about it later. And get right into it. Now this is titled Algonquin Park, Ontario Bigfoot. Great channel. Started following about a month ago. You can share if you want. I want to say I think you're doing justice for people that have had these experiences. I live in Ontario, Canada. For many years I've been going to Algonquin Park. Portaging deep into the park. Never really looking for evidence of Bigfoot. In 2015 on a five day trip we pulled into a campsite. As unloading our gear, we hear a terrifying growling sound. Without hesitation, we got the hell out of there. I've always had an interest in Bigfoot. I think with all the evidence, why would they not exist? Maybe it was wolves fighting over food? I'm not sure. We didn't stick around to find out. In 2019, on another six-day trip in Algonquin Park, we went out to take Splake. We went out to take Splake off the bucket list. We spent our last three days on a lake that has splake. It went well and crossed that species off the list. Anyhow, the day we were leaving, we packed up and crossed the lake to the portage. Portage. Once we got all our gear up to the path and the canoe, we decided to have a snack for energy as we had a 2100 meter portage. Whoa. 2100? It's a long ways. At this point, you could see most of the lake, and our sight was just straight across. For some reason, I don't know why, I looked over to our sight. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. A massive, hairy figure came out from behind the tree. It took a few steps and got behind another tree. It was looking at us from behind the tree. Only his head and part of his shoulder was visible. I didn't say a word to my buddy. His son was with us, and I didn't want to freak him out. He's only nine at the time, and it was his second time canoeing on trips with us. I didn't want to thin the, I'm sorry, I didn't want to ruin the experience for him, and kept this to myself for two years. I just recently told my buddy what I saw, and he asked, "Why didn't I say anything?" Well, for one, I didn't want to scare your son, and I didn't think you would believe me. Thank you for what you do and your channel. You help me actually talked to my buddy about it. It actually took a load off my back. I'm not scared of them. I don't look for them either. I hope one day, and I do 
I hope one day, and I do believe with all the hard work you do, they will be recognized. Thank you so much for your listening. Take care and be safe. Uh, welcome to the club. Recognized. Um, we're the people. We are the people. So that's about all we need to uh, have except these facts, right? As far as the people who disperse whatever knowledge or information they want to disperse to the people, they can all go kiss my ass. There's nothing I need them to acknowledge, say, do. Well, I got a few things I need them to do, but it wouldn't make their... All right, I'll bite my lip. Yeah, they are recognized. It's just a matter of how many people are, are willing to listen to the people and listen to the truth and accept the truth, which is a lot at this stage of the game. There's no... Uh, if you listen to this channel, and I'm sure quite a few other channels, if you actually listen today, um, you soon realize that you've been duped. You have been duped in a big way. All right, I'm going to I'm gonna bite my lip. Let's get somebody else heard. Thanks for sending that in. I appreciate it. I'm glad you came out. Super stoked that you came out and finally spoke openly about it. There's another one from... When's this? This is in 2020. What are the what are the chances of this? Listen to this. The title: Algonquin Park Print. Crazy. We just had another email from Algonquin Park, and they're not in order. Believe me. Hey Steve, I was hiking in Algonquin Park with a friend when, right in the middle of the trail, we saw a massive footprint. We both stood there in shock at how big it was, and we both said that it looks like it could be Shaq's Shaquille O'Neal footprint, only bigger. No other tracks anywhere around it. We went. We were for. We were at a loss for words, but thought it was like someone playing a prank, being that it was in the middle of the trail. Just for reference, we were, we were there on a Tuesday morning, before anyone else. Not a single car anywhere on Highway 60, driving into the park, or at any trailheads. We continued hiking and stopped for water. None of us talking, just staring into the forest, trying to catch our breath. It was so humid. And not a single leap was shaking there, whereas there was just no breeze. I'm staring off into the woods when a single tiny branch on a small tree just went flying back and forth as if someone had slapped a single branch as they walked by. It sounds like nothing, writing it down, but it was so obvious and right in my field of view, not 15 feet away. No other animals around but chipmunks, and it wasn't a chipmunk that shook or hit this single branch. I don't want to be suggestive in any way, but it, but I felt in that moment that something was trying to get my attention. My friend asked me what's up because I guess I looked a little puzzled, and I said, nothing, let's keep going. Later in the hike, we stopped again for a breather, and by this time we were talking normally, making the usual amount of noise two guys would make walking in the woods. We both decided to sit down, and as conversation stopped for a few minutes as we were just chilling there, we heard what sounded like something walking toward us. We sprang up, made noise, and it did not run away. Instead, it got very quiet. I would only move away stealthily when we made noise. This could have easily been a bear, I admit. I was a little rattled at this point. Anyway, my friend does not know what to make of that print. He does not follow the topic at all. I would say that I just have started to look into things a little deeper and am finding it harder to harder to relax in the woods. My last camping trip, which also is in the park, resulted in a sleepless night. Sounds from different directions, like someone walking in the woods, but the timing was extremely sneaky. Waiting for two of the three to fall asleep and snore, all lights out, that sort of thing. I've been camping many times and used to worry about bears, but lately I don't know what to believe or worry about and it's ruining the outdoors for me to some degree. I also feel like the more I look into this, the more I've noticed. I don't know if that's me going crazy or actually paying attention, but I've smelled strong odors that come and go out of nowhere, tracks in the snow that don't make sense, and when I'm hiking with anyone, I'm super paranoid about letting anyone out of my sight. I don't even know why I'm sending this. It's not very exciting compared to some of the other stuff, but I get such a strong feeling that this just isn't in my head. 
My problem is I am worried the outdoors are being ruined. For slowly, and I feel like a giant pussy. Pardon my language. Need to find a way to either forget all this stuff or not be afraid of it. Thanks, Anonymous. All right, well, you're not alone, obviously, right? And the fact that you are here and writing into here tells me that you already know what's up. You're just looking for some sort of validation in a way, right? Confirmation. I'm pretty confident you can scratch going crazy off of the uh, the list. You're just becoming more aware. You're becoming more in tune with your senses, your natural gifts, skills that we all have. You're becoming more in tune. That's all. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Right? You're you're on the right track. You're going with it. It's a good thing. Don't ignore it. Now, who's next? Here's another one. Sasquatch peed in our tent. Ram River, Alberta. All right, well, there's two common things there. Not the first time we've heard of a tent being peed on, and the Ram River is a uh, is a common place to have people writing in about. Hi, Steve. This is what happened to me, my son, and his girlfriend a few years ago at Ram River Campground in Alberta. On July 16th to 20th, 2017, my son, his girlfriend, and I went camping at a provincial campground in Alberta about an hour south of Nordeg. Nordeg, lots of stuff goes on there. We heard something playing with things on the picnic table for three of the four nights we were there. I put my game cam on the picnic table, but nothing happened that night. The most eventful night was Monday and Tuesday, the second night. Something swiped the side of the tent. Then it sounded like it was going through our garbage bag, plastic wrappings and stuff we couldn't burn. It sounded like it was making a great mess. Then one of the tin plates that was on the table crashed to the ground. There was other noise as well. Anyway, then I distinctively distinctly heard four bipedal footsteps coming forward to the tent and then a grunt. I panicked and reached over trying to wake up my son by shaking his face and he did not wake up. The noise stopped for a while, but whatever had been there came back twice that night. Morning came, and I told the kids what happened the night before. Nothing was disturbed. The garbage was where it should have been. The plate was on the ground, but that was all. We decided to get out of there for a while and drove into Rocky Mountain House for lunch and some supplies. We were gone for a, a few hours. When we came back, the first thing we noticed was that something was spilled or sprayed all over the tent. The tent's brand new. We just took it out of its wrappings the day we got there, and we sure would have been... Sorry and we're sure would have seen all this stuff. The campground is basically deserted. I think we arrived, we saw two other campers in the whole place. It has 54 sites, divided into five loops, and two of them were closed. Over the next few nights, we had the tent swiped again and heard something playing around with things on the picnic table. One night, I heard something poking around my car. I have no idea what was happening. All I know is that it was coming from around my car. I thought something could have been less, could have been eating bugs from the grill. I took a look around the next morning and found dusty fingerprints on the car window. Very small, like the tip of my little finger. I noticed I noticed what were probably dermal ridges in a couple of the prints. After I returned home, I got a black light and I took a look at the tent. The stains fluorescent Fluorescent, indicating urine. I cut off one of the window flaps. It had a lot of staining and provided a part of it to Chris Murphy. There was no doubt in my mind that what I heard that Monday night was a Sasquatch. Four bipedal footsteps and a grunt. Don't know who Chris Murphy is. We've been back two times, 2018, 2019. We've heard the yelling to each other from different directions. Both years... We put, we put a mirror on the picnic table, and both times that mirror was thrown to the ground. There's no way it fell off by itself. Nothing else could have knocked it off. And that's it. And there's the photos. Hmm. I, uh, you didn't mention any scent. I'm guessing that that was urine. Well, I don't know. I haven't a clue what it was. I wasn't there, but usually when any animal 
Bray's urine stinks to high hell. We've had a lot of game animals peeing. I've had a bear pee on me from up in a tree, and that scent was unbelievable. We've had wolverine spray urine on our kills, and that is absolutely nasty. Elk, everything has its own nasty smell. I'm surprised it wasn't a scent, scent mentioned in that, but whatever. There you go. Another, another experience from Ram River, Alberta, near Nordag. There is absolutely no shortage of things going on in that country. None. No shortage. Thanks for sending that in. All right, here's another one. No title. First off, I'm not a good storyteller, and I suck at typing. So, I'm going to use the double index finger pecking technique as usual. My story happened in Fallcroft, PA, right outside southwest Philadelphia, PA. And you see a lot of freaky shit where I'm from, but nothing made me act in a way that I did that night because I was not by myself. I had my cousin with me, who was probably seven years old, and the danger alarm went off full force. There's a small wooded area right. There's a small wooded area right, and it connects to a water treatment plant that is connected to a nature reserve. If you look on Google Earth, you can see the woods connect and go all the way out Route 1. So, I guess it's possible something could live there, and there are plenty of deer. Well, we park, walk into the woods, and I got the feeling kids were down there, probably underage drinking, just like we all did back in the day. And then I hear what sounded like a group of people talking. And I got down on one knee, 30 feet into the woods, on top of this hill that drops off 15 feet in front of my kind of left. So I'm palming my flashlight and telling my cousin to stop talking. What does that sound? Is it kids? I don't know. Can't really make it out. So I reach down, picked up a pebble. This will get a reaction. And I'll find out if it's people or not, so we will leave. So I wind up and heave it in the direction of the voices, way down to the right of us. I hear it smack through the layers of leaves and it hits and it hit rocks, and then, te and then 10 feet in front of us to my left, I hear this growl breathing. I only can't explain, it sounded like a human with water in its lungs, huffing and puffing right there. It vibrated my chest, it was effing furious at me, whatever it was. I felt like I stuck my finger in an electrical outlet. Every hair on the back of my neck and arms were standing on end. I calmly stood up, grabbed my cousin's hand, and said, out loud, okay, we're leaving now. We turned 180 degrees and walked out and walked briskly out of the woods. Ha <laughs> ha. I never seen what this was, but that was a drop off right there where I heard the sound from 15 feet down. And it was on the edge, or I don't know, tall. It sounded like it was level with me, 10 feet away. Thinking about it, I remember as a kid that same feeling at the zoo when the lions would pop off and flex and roar. LOL. Okay, Steve, I hope it wasn't a disappointment. The story still gives me goosebumps. And I've gone back down there. And have I gone back? Sorry. And have I gone back down there since? F no. I watch you every day for two years now. I'm glad to shoot you this text. Thank you, Steve. Peace, Jack and Philly. Kind of a little confused. Hold on a sec. First off, I'm starting to start another raid. I was not by myself. I had my cousin with me who was probably seven years old. Treatment's plant in his nighttime? You didn't say what you were doing. Where were you going with a seven-year-old kid in the dark in the woods? Why? Am I reading this wrong? Small wooded area, connects water, blah, blah, blah. I live out there on the plenty of deer. We park and walk into the woods. I got the feeling kids were down there. People and I got going down one knee, 30 feet in. Palming my flashlight. All right, confirmed. You wrote You wrote to us you had a seven-year-old cousin with you, parked him, you went to the woods in the dark with the flashlight. You didn't say why. What the F's going on? You reached down, picked up a pebble. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm not trying to make an issue out of this, but this is what I'm reading, and I'm, this is what I'm curious about. What were you doing? Why were you doing that? You forgot a big part, and there's going to be a lot of human beings going, dude, what are you doing, man? Right? Anyway, the growl part, and the uh, that all sounds about right with what goes on when 
a lot of people have experiences with these beings but not too many people go into the woods at night with a flashlight and a seven-year-old kid odd odd one this is probably a good chance you might want to write us back and fill us in the rest of the story now <clears throat> excuse me moving along you know mark this is red now here's another one from this is from 2020 this is titled big quote foot quote end quote encounter and the bf blah blah oh hi steve okay hold on a minute where are we here back down here all right here we go hi steve i too like suzanne current read that again i comma two comma like suzanne current in may of 2014 attended my first and last bigfoot convention in salt fork state park in ohio oh it was impressive at first but after getting into this topic more i realized what was really going on there there were some very good speakers such as sibylla irwin bob gimlin but for the most part the rest of them were basically full of fluff and nonsense there's plenty of stuff you could buy at the vendor tables and lots of people had stories but there was still something missing at the time i couldn't figure out what it was but soon figured out it was the truth most of what i got was a lot of hype and commercialism what got me there in the first place was not actually a sighting but prints i found in my farm in between in february of 2013 the weather had been harsh so harsh in fact that i was unable to turn horses out for a few days we had bad weather like you get temps below zero high winds snow the barn doors actually froze shut when there was finally a break in the weather i was sur surveying the barn and and turnout area to see what kind of ice and snow i was dealing with as clear as the nose on my face i found these giant barefoot human looking prints near the barn i did take pictures of them the day they were discovered and the following day before the prince melted or were disturbed those pictures are attached as i said i did not actually see a being but stumbled upon those tracks wholly freaked me out i couldn't believe what i was looking at and got an incredible eerie feeling what in the world would someone be doing in this weather in bare feet you see where i lived sold that farm three years ago was flat open farm ground there were a few clumps of small wooded areas spread out the countryside, but for the most part, it's totally flat ground that you can see for miles. It would be difficult for something to sneak around unless they did it at night. Okay, so I told my family about this when I discovered the tracks. They didn't really make fun of me, but didn't know what to make of it either. So I just tucked it away in my memory and didn't really talk about it anymore. However, when going to the barn, especially in the dark, I was very much aware of my surroundings. During this time was when the show Finding Bullshit was on. I added in the bullshit part. <laughs> I certainly didn't take that show as gospel, but I did. Oops, sorry, I just lost my spot. Damn it. I hate it when that happens. I certainly didn't take that show as gospel, but I did like hearing people's encounters. The hosts of the show were another story. In addition, in addition, I was doing more reading on the internet about this subject. And finally, in the fall of 2013, I contacted the BF Barfo. I figured they would just blow me off. But within a couple of days, I received a phone call from a local, quote, investigator, end quote, that wanted to come to my farm and hear my story and see where I found these tracks. It was subsequent to their visit to my farm that I was invited to attend their conference at Salt Fork for the following spring. And I must admit, I was quite excited to do so. Cliff Barkman, Barkman, Berk Barkman <laughs> was at that conference, and since he claimed to be such a, quote, expert, end quote, on tracks, I thought I would show him my pictures and get his professional opinion. Ha <laughs> ha. All I got out of that was a picture taken with him. Oh, joy. An expert, huh? An expert. A reality TV actor gets the title of being an expert 
All right, I'll bite my lip. After that conference and after more years of hearing incredible people's stories and using my own brain to sort this out, I am totally convinced, like you and so many others, that someone does know the truth. And gosh darn it, if we need to know about it. To this day, I try my darnest to be aware of my surroundings at all times. I swear where I live now I have heard something mimicking cows. There's a mega dairy near me, but not close enough for me to hear them. Besides, whatever makes this noise doesn't really sound like a cow. It sounds kind of robotic. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to read this, Steve. I know you're a very busy man. We appreciate your efforts immensely. Thank you for standing up, representing us, and getting closer to the truth. Feel free to use my name. It's an unusual name. First name pronounced like the old lava soap. Okay. And second name like ride an hour. All right. Hope this helps. Okay, here we go. Tava Ridenour. Ridenour. There we go. Tava Ridenour. Got it. Nailed it. <laughs> There's the photos. Typical, classic Sasquatch being photos in the snow. These pictures look familiar. I may have read this before. Maybe not. Appreciate you sending that in, man, and your honesty. And um, if you learned anything since, had anything happen, you found it fair what made that sound, then uh, email us back if you want. That'd be great. All right, here's another one. Mark, this is red. This is from, hey, hold on a second. This is from 2020. All right. Money Taker. Town Hall, Este Park, Colorado. Hello, Steve. My name is Doug Willard. Yes, can use my name. I, like you, am too old for BS. I am a subject matter expert for the Air Force and lived in Colorado until a year and a half ago. I've spent 50 years hunting all over North America and Canada. And unfortunately, I ran across sign of these things in Colorado while predator hunting. At that point, I contacted the BF... I think we can call the BS. Let's call the BSRO. As I had no one to reach out to, I told my story. And where? And the investigator said, yes, they are in that area. <laughs> you imagine some human being that actually thinks he's in a position where he can tell you if they're in an area or not. Good God, help me. I went back and started looking in the area and actually spent the night there. By the way, someone I met at the Department of Defense actually seen a Sasquatch face-to-face -face at 30 yards while on horseback. She was in the Cripple Creek area of Teller County. I made a road trip up to a town hall held in Este Park, Colorado, hosted by the BSRO. And Mr. Oh, sorry, I have a tough time pronouncing names sometime. Money Faker? Money Taker? Nope. Fat abuse, woman abusing douchebag? Yeah, that's how it read. Was there via Skype? Long story short, some people had actually seen them near me, and I had my chance to speak. I brought up the Melba Ketchum DNA study, and that's when fat abusive loser and myself started some back and forth. You could tell they did not like me bringing that up, and the fat bastard did not have good things to say about Miss Ketchum. Later, his own BSRO guys tell me they do carry guns in the woods, and even though Money Taker frowns on it. Please keep, the, keep up the good work getting to the truth, because it's time to end this. Yeah. I hate to say bad things about people, so I'll bite my lip. <laughs> there you go. I appreciate you sending that in, man. Absolutely appreciate you sending that in. I'm glad you brought up our superhero Dr. Ketchum's findings. And there you go. As far as the names mentioned, they are kicked to the curb. In the gutter with the rest of the scum and slime. And that's where we leave them lay. Now, move it along. What's this one? This is titled Alexandria. S.D. is the title of this email. You know, it's funny, it's funny, actually. If you could actually single out one group that's done the most damage to innocent good people and this topic, it would have to be the BSRO, led by that absolute douchebag. Money faker. 
You know what I mean? There's nothing worse than abusive, psychopathic. All right, I'll, I'll buy my lib. But they have done possibly the most damage to this topic as a whole. But not anymore. No. All right, here we go. Let's get on this. Sorry about that. Alexandria SD. I'm emailing you this so that you know that Bigfoot is not always in the mountains. The location of this sighting does not have mountains for 300 miles to the west. Only tree claims and basically no hills except by the rivers. The nearest river is 20 miles to the west, the James River. This area is farming and pastured land. I documented this incident many years ago so that it would remain accurate. It was the late 70s. The location was seven and a half. Seven and one eighth miles north of Alexandria SD. Clear night with good visibility for being at night. It was about 12.30 a.m. The Bigfoot was standing looking west. The Bigfoot was at least seven feet tall. It looked brownish black in the limited light and very shaggy. The hair looked like it was as long as the Bigfoot's body. I was driving by on the road that goes north and south. I was going south. The tree claim is east and west. The Bigfoot was about 50 yards on the east side of the road and 10 yards west of the end of the tree claim. No leaves on the trees. A small creek is about 150 yards to the north of the Bigfoot, and I looked as I drove by. The Bigfoot did not turn and look at me, just kept looking to the west as I drove by in its line of vision. The next morning, I seen my friend at school. We both traveled this road to see our girlfriends. We looked at each other and stated, did you see anything weird la last night? We both stated we seen a Bigfoot. My friend seen the Bigfoot maybe an hour or so later than I did. I am the girlfriend, and this is my husband's story. Feel free to share. And share it, share it, it is. Appreciate you sharing that and send that in. Very detailed on the wear. And on the hair thing, you know, one of my best friends... He had one of these things get up in front of him, not too far from Mount Curry, British Columbia, and it walked away from him in a grassy meadow. He said the same thing. He said it looked like it was a man in a ghillie suit. It was fall, and that dude had a lot of hair on it. A lot of hair. Now, what else have we got? Hey, quick note to you guys. I had somebody from the BSRO email me and share with me that person. I will say if it was male or female. That person shared with me that they were scared of what that slob at the BSRO would do to that person or their family if caught talking to me or outside of their circle in any way, shape, or form. Wasn't actually employed by them, but not anymore. Imagine that. Imagine being scared. Scared of that prick for what he might do to you or your family. That's a quote from the person. Know who they are. Is that amazing? And when apparently anybody who is employed by BSRO is not allowed to be watching this channel. <laughs> There's your sign, right? You can't, you can't match more of a blatant in your face sign. You're an absolute dick when you try to dictate to what people what they can do online in their own time or not. Oh, amazing is not, but a good little hint. All right, that's all I'm going to say on that. I'm done. Now, here's one. No title. Hey, Steve. First off, we love your videos. This literally happened last night, January 30th, 2020. I wanted to write you while it's still fresh in my mind. My husband is here with me, and he witnessed this too. Our daughter has a one-year-old blue tick coon hound. His name is Blue. Last night, I let the dogs out at exactly 7.15. I pay attention to the time because Blue is an escape artist, and I check on them every five minutes. I could hear Blue baying at something outside. Not unusual. We live in the country and there are a lot of deer and other wildlife. At 7.20, I checked outside. The other two dogs wanted in, but Blue was nowhere to be seen. I yelled to my husband and daughter to get their boots on and help find him. We own a 20-acre wooded lot, and all the surrounding property is roughly 300 acres of forest. There is mostly forest surrounded, surrounding the area I'm describing. It's a small town in the foothills of the Allegheny Mountains in New York State. I grabbed the flashlight and started following the dog's tracks in the snow. I got about 100 yards away from the house, calling the entire time for Blue. I heard a coyote howl, and then all the yips and barks of a pack, then instant silence. I called again for Blue and heard him baying off in the distance, and he wasn't near the coyotes. I heard someone walking behind me, 
pacing me but not getting closer. I thought it was my husband. I said, do you hear the coyotes? No reply. It's late January with snow on the ground. Utter silence. I turned to look. Nobody was behind me. I followed the tracks a little ways further but decided to head back and see where my husband was. I found him closer to the house and told him what I heard and that I had fresh trail of dog tracks. My husband and I headed back out under the woods together, leaving our daughter at the house in case Blue came back on his own. We were about a quarter mile into the woods calling for Blue and hearing, <clears throat> excuse me, hearing his baying always getting further away. Over two ravines and into the deep forest, 100 foot pines. Eerie silent except for our calls to the stupid dog. We both stopped moving at the same time, no reason. He tapped my shoulder and said, let me call out. He let out a big, loud, blue. We walked about three seconds and heard a reply. Really close, maybe a hundred yards. Woo! Replied to him. We looked at each other in disbelief. I felt sheer terror and told him I was scared. He called out again, blue. Suddenly, I got a very calm feeling. And then the reply, Whoa! I said, whoa. Let me call out. I called out, Blooty Rooty Tooty Tootin'. A silly nickname for the stupid dog. Then another, whoa, back. This went on for a few more times. It wasn't a dog, a person, or an owl, or any animal we've ever heard. And believe me, we hear lots of other animals. The closest I can describe that sound was part human, part animal. But my husband believes it was my husband believes it was mimicking us almost trying to yell blue with all the noise we were making at this time around nine at night every animal in that forest was long gone even if they were there we all know there are new animals that reply to people yelling this was a direct intentional and distinct reply to our calls neither of us felt scared just an odd feeling of calm for no reason at all we both turned and followed the tracks back to the house we didn't discuss it. We just started walking back. Thank goodness when we got there, Blue was waiting for us on the porch. Even now as I write, we still can't wrap our heads around it. Thanks for your time. And if you do read this in one of your videos, you can use our names. Craig and Katrina Richardson. Thanks again. Keep up the great work. All right, Katrina, thanks for sending that in. I wonder if anything else has happened since. I was in 2020? I think it, when I just say 2020, uh, where are we here? Yeah, January 2020, where that was sent in. Holy cow, eh? I found a folder. I found another folder in my email a while back. I had 1,200 emails in it, so I got a bunch of old ones in there. But at least I, I found it, and I'm reading them out. But there you go. There's a handful more heard. Hmm. Interesting, Katrina. I wonder what else is going around that property since then. I'm guessing more, I'd imagine. If you're still hanging here and um, something else is going down or you've learned something, you can always email back to us if you want to share it. Share my story at howtohunt.com and it'll get read. Anything you guys got, anybody that you feel will help you or me or the people, get it to us. Just get it to us and just do it, all right? There you go. Off to my day. I'll be back tomorrow from a different location on the planet, closer to home.